Good morning, my name is Eric Marsh. I'm a pastor in Long Beach, and I've been asked today to speak on collaboration. When I was a young pastor, my, my, my boss had a poster in his office called A Modest Proposal for Peace. It was, it was a 70s shot of two men hugging one another. And it said, may the Christians of the world resolve not to kill one another. I thought it was the most ridiculous hyperbole as a 20 something pastor. And as I've gotten older, I realized, you know, there's some real truth to that. We, we do want to kill one another, especially during these COVID times. I think that's become sport for many of us, even us clergy. Twitter, Facebook, we, we're, we're annihilating one another. So a modest proposal of peace, may we not kill one another. I think some of us, um, we, we actually succeed in not killing one another by just avoiding one another, by not being in relationship with others, even in our own city. Today, I've been asked to speak about collaboration, and I think where it is, it is a good thing to not kill one another. I think it's not something that we can stand on and be proud of. It's not enough just to be in our own organizations, our own churches, our own faith organizations, and, and stay to ourselves in order to not fight. I think there is there's a, a lot of opportunity to serve our communities, to serve our faith community, to serve our cities where we live by working better together, but it's hard. And so today I want to just give a couple of thoughts on how I think um, our best practices that I've learned from friends, from older writers, from women and men who are doing this very, very, very well. Quick history on me. I've, I've been in the city for 25 years. Um, grew up in San Diego, got to Long Beach as soon as I could. I've been a pastor for, for most of the time. I've worked at two churches and I've led about six initiatives that are collaborative in nature. Some of them worked out well, some of them were, were not as great. But there's a question that haunts me whenever I think about the idea of collaboration. When I think about going beyond the admirable thing of not killing one another, what does it mean to work together? The question is this, why is it the exception rather than the rule for Christian organizations, for faith organizations to work together? Why, why is, is the average pastor surprised when something goes well when churches, especially different denominations or even denominations working with non-faith organizations? How, why is it, why is it the exception that those things work together? I want to define collaboration, the, the, the best definition that I found for collaboration, and that is, as we begin, definition of collaboration I want to work off of is a partnership where you create value. So it's, a, it's, it's somewhere where you come together and you create the value, and then even more importantly, you capture that value. Let me give a couple of caveats to that. Number one, um, many partnerships that you and I are aware of or know of are, are actually just friendships. They're just a, a, an organ, sometimes they're organizations, but for, for many of us, the, the way we experience collaboration is just when we come together to, to, to have what we all need for, for human existence. We know that even more during COVID and that is just basic friendships. That, that's not a collaboration. The second caveat that I want to make is it's not enough to create the value. You have to capture the value. You have to, um, after you create things that are helpful for people, you have to be able to deliver those things and be able to, to and I'll, I'll hit on that in just a few minutes. It's not enough just to create it, you have to capture it. Let me give a couple of examples outside of the faith background. So one of my best friends works in the biotech field and the very nature of his job is he tries to take his company and figure out where can they create successful collaborations with other companies to increase the value and then capture that value for not only the consumer, but for the, the, the people they're trying to serve, the patients that have these diseases. Um, another couple of ministry examples that, that have been very impressive. One is there's, there's an organization called Brave here in our Long Beach area. And that was a partnership between the Salvation Army, a local church that was planted off of the, out of the one that I'm in right now, and an organization that serves the foster children in the greater LA County area. They've come together to create this experience where teenage girls who are in foster homes can have an experience to be able to meet mentors and be trained on what it means to be brave as, as, as young ladies, kind of a TED experience, brave. Another example is, is a group of us came together in order to help new church starts called Church Plants in the area be launched and successful, we created this thing called Plants LB, which, which was a collaborative that worked together from multiple denominations in order to serve and restart organize, restart churches or to start new churches in our area um, to, to replace those that were dying. A couple of examples of partnerships where we come together to create new value that's then captured. 
Um, I've learned a few things, and I want to share this in the last couple of minutes that we have together about obstacles and distractions. Um, obstacles and essentials, sorry, obstacles and essentials. I want to talk first about three obstacles to good collaboration. The first obstacle is distraction. Many of us are distracted all the time. And to get people to work together, you have to work through the fact, the reality that there are going to be distractions. The second obstacle is what I, what I coin, uh, why the hell did he do that? Um, as I've worked with leaders for the last 25 years, I often will have side conversations where someone will say, I don't want to work with them. Why the hell did they do that? And I think that, um, that gets to, to obstacle number three and, and ties into obstacle number three, which is if we don't keep short accounts with the leaders that we want to work with, then we're going to continue to go back to number two, which is remembering and identifying them in the why the hell did they do that? There are several essentials. I want to share three of them for any collaboration to work together. The first is friendship and trust. In Patrick Lencioni's book, Five Dysfunctions of a Team, he identifies that the number one thing for any team, and I would argue a collaboration to work together too, is trust. All of the, all of the literature and research that Harvard has done has assumes that as well. So the first essential is friendship and trust. The second essential is someone has to lead. There's a great business book written by two professors at Stanford called The Starfish and the Spider about decentralized movements like Craigslist and eBay. And one of the essentials that they said is absolutely necessary for a movement to come together to, and that's decentralized, that's not a hierarchy per se, and a collaboration is, is that as well, is someone has to lead. You have to have a leader and they have to be willing to take off their hat in order to lead. The third, the third essential that I wanna share is you have to be willing to take the long view. You have to look beyond this immediate quarter, this immediate year. We just raised $250,000 to help lower resource churches in our area who are struggling during COVID. We're gonna give it away. And as we announced that we have this money, I've had a ton of people come up to me and say, how did you get that? Very simple. It's 25 years of practicing friendship and trust and trusting somebody to lead and, and not, not leaning into the, the things like, why the hell did he do that? You have to take the long view. It's hard work, but it's worth the effort. And I look forward to our, our conversation as we talk about um, what we can each learn from one another about how to be better at collaborating in our cities with other faith organizations. Thank you.